Well, today I have a task. I, I'm going to flush out all my pots that are in pawn. You can probably see that the water is quite murky and that usually is from the sediment that comes off of the pond. So I've decided today I'm going to give them a flush and I'm going to add new nutrient liquid to them. These are just the ones that are in my retro cabinets. I still have my Fabricor and I still have my original which is in my family room but I may not have time to do that today. If I do I will record it and we will put it up in another video. If that's something you're interested in you can let me know in the comments. So without further ado, let's get to the video. So I thought as we're doing this, I might as well update you on the growth on these plants. There's quite a lot of new growth on them. So uh, before, as I'm taking the plants to flush, I will show them to you. Now I still have no idea what this one is. I had a quick look on my orders and at one point I did order a Regida, or Regida, however you pronounce it, long leaf, but I believe that I lost those plants, but it is possible, maybe, that that's what this is. If you have any idea, let me know. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous. I love the way the veining goes vertically down the leaf and it has just taken off, it's doing so well. So what I do, I'll take you over to the sink and show you in a moment, um, is I obviously take out the pot, bring it over to the tap, flush the water through it and then I wash these pots. Now this is nutrient water in here but it's fine, I'm just going to throw it out because I want to give the pots a really good wash. So let me take you to the sink first and show you how I do this. Nothing. No great science to this guys. Obviously you're going to use cold water and then I literally just, can you see, let me move some of these out of the way in case they are in the way. Okay, so I literally just rinse it through and sometimes you can actually see like that the water is a little bit murky. But it just gives it a little clean. Sometimes you do get like a, a musty smell out of the pond. This particular one isn't musty, but sometimes you do get a musty smell. Um, so it, they really do benefit from this flushing. Okay, so there is the first one. And then I'm just going to, I'm not going to put them back in their pot. I'm just going to leave them here. And then I'm going to rinse out the pots. This here is my Crassi Petiolata, which has actually, you can see actually how dirty the wicking cord is on that one so that really needed a good flush. So this is the Crassi Petiolata. This here is a new leaf. It hasn't put anything out since but um, you know sometimes they just do take a while to acclimate to their new environment but at least I have gotten one new leaf. This is just incredibly beautiful. This here is my Hoya Burmanica which I love. I love this plant. It kind of has um, it, it kind of has polyneura vibes, doesn't it? It has almost has like a fishtail shape to the plant. And this is a, a prolific grower. I bought this off Paula and it wasn't doing tremendously. I took a cutting of it and the cutting is doing brilliantly now. So I actually have two of these plants, but you can see how pretty she is. And she's putting out new leaves. Um, here is my Meridithii. So, I wasn't getting any growth out of this and I was getting concerned and then I took it out actually the other night I took it out of the pond and lo and behold there was a new growth point. I think I may have inadvertently uh, knocked the top off of it but I'm hopeful that it will re you know it will be okay and it will put out a new leaf but um, it did take a long time. So what I would say to you is, don't ever give up hope. It is putting out roots. Um, you can see there are little baby roots, I hope, sticking out of the pot. So it was the roots are beautiful on it. And I just hope that I didn't damage that new growth point and that I will be able to get some more beautiful leaves on this gorgeous plant, the Meridithii. Guys, this is my 
parasitic a heart shape. I cannot get over this leaf. Look at how big it is and it is so shiny. It's such a beautiful plant. Look at how well it's doing. So when I bought this, it was a two leaf cutting and then it grew very long so I took a cutting. So now I actually have two pieces in here. That's the thing about Hoyas guys. When you take a cutting, they sometimes take off. They do much better after you've given them a cutting. But this is just so incredibly pretty. I'm loving this plant. So the parasitica heart shape. Um, my Ache. So this came from in an Indonesian import and it does get a lot bigger. It can have very big leaves, but when I got this, it, I don't think it had any leaves. I think it lost all its leaves. So these are all new. And you can see they're not huge yet, but actually it kind of suits me perfectly because they still fit in my cabinet. So this is the Hoya Ache. Now this is very sad. If you follow me, I, d I actually cut this up on a video, but I think the reason it isn't doing well is because the, the cuttings are just way too long. So I think I'm gonna chop it up again. This is the Hoya Bella, just the green. And um, I've been kind of struggling with her. I do have a second Bella actually, which I'm, is here, which was struggling, but it's kind of starting to get better now. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna make smaller cuttings of this and I'll put them all together. Actually, I'm quite surprised these ones really have picked up again. So I thought I was gonna lose these ones. This I love. Okay, what did we, what is this one again? This is the Rincei. I got this from my friend Tatum and um, she says it's the Rincei, it's a Rincei. I don't think it's Rincei Borneo, but the, the irregular Rincei is just a plain green round leaf, which I also have. But I think this, oh no, I lost a leaf. This happens sometimes, guys. I Oh, I have another one I'm losing there. I lost all the leaves off of my um, caudata, but look, they have all come back. It's so beautiful. So I don't know why these two are falling off. Um, I'm not gonna to touch any more because I don't wanna lose any more of them. But look at how pretty this plant is. It's just gorgeous. I'm so sad to lose these. Maybe I hit them off of something when I was carrying them out of the cabinet. Next up is my, okay. So when I bought this, it was called a Louis Bois, but we now know it's actually Lida Bois. This is the inner variegated, uh, what's it called again? I just showed you the other one. Bella, <laughs> I couldn't think for a moment. This is the inner variegated Bella. So, so cute. And I also have the outer variegated Bella. And I may put these two together because I just have one strand of the outer variegated. I've had this for a long time and it has really struggled. Um, I don't know what has been going on with it. You can actually see here, like look at how dirty that water is. So it really needs a good clean. Um, again, I showed you my cut out, but I, I think it is deserving of another showing. It's very hard because I'm getting old and my eyesight is deteriorating. I can't always tell if the footage is clear, but I do definitely want you guys to see this. She is stunning. Probably, yeah, she could probably be ready to go into a bigger pot. I may do that with her, not today, but I'll do it sometime soon. And this here is the Hoya flagellata, which actually always reminds me of the caudata. Can you see the leaf there? It, I always say this has caudata vibes and I do love this plant. So this is actually, I did actually just take a cutting of it because it had gotten very long and I wanted to fill it out and make a fuller plant of it. So that is the Hoya flagellata. Here we have the Hoya fuaensis. Again, another beauty. I love this plant. Now you can see most of the leaves are kind of elongated, but I've got one round leaf. Can you see it there? I got one round leaf here, which is really cute. But it just shows you nature dances to its own beat. And then I have, this is the Hoya Weimanii. So Paula 
gave me this um, just a tiny little cutting and it is just doing tremendously as you can see it has put out a new shoot and there's lots of new little babies baby leaves coming there this does sun stress but my cabinets because I don't have proper grow lights in them <laughs> I use undercovered lighting I don't get that sun stressing that you would get in other under other lighting the, this here is my Hoya Lacunosa black isn't she pretty I think I'll wash the pots first so then when they're washed I can put them back into their pots I love doing this it's so satisfying like, you know when you clean your house and it looks nice and clean, well, that's, it, I get the same uh, satisfaction from doing this. So while I am doing this, I will also tell you a little bit about what has happened lately. So, I got a twist outbreak. It wasn't, it wasn't horrendous. I actually only saw two, but I saw one in my fabricor cabinet and I saw one over on my window. So. I decided that I was going to treat the whole downstairs of the house and luckily the weather is so nice that the dogs and I could spend like two hours outside. I closed all the windows and I put the doggies out, made sure there was no food out and I got my Dr. Doom Fogger. Now Dr. Doom carry a lot of different products. Their fogger is amazing. It will kill fungus gnats, it will kill thrips. I don't know if it will kill mealybugs, but I'm assuming it would. And what you do is you have to spray your house or your room, and then you have to leave for two hours. And when you come back then, you have to open all your windows and doors like for a half an hour or so. And it actually works tremendously. Now I, you know, was, I just couldn't be bothered going around and just tr individually treating all the plants. I don't buy beneficial bugs, guys. I have bought them and I even did a video on it. But I'm, you know, they're not my thing. As everybody to their own. But I absolutely love this Dr. Doom. They, there's a lot of different products. I use two of their products. One of them is amazing for spider mites. You spray it directly onto the leaves and the fogger you just spray in the room so anyway i did that and when i came back in i checked all my plants and from what i could see i couldn't see any thrips so i'm hoping it has done the job i will keep a close look and if um, i see more i will treat them again now if you have animals and you can't leave the house with them i mean technically you could lock them in the basement you know but Certainly don't allow your animals to be in the room after you've sprayed it. It's like, if you you know, thankfully I have never had um, cockroaches or bed bugs, but I am a property manager by profession and I have had to treat um, the townhouses where I worked. And basically it's the same idea. You have to leave the house uh, and then come back a couple of hours later, open the windows. So it's pretty much the same idea. But I love this stuff. So let's hope that I don't have any more issues. Um, and if I, you know, I'll keep you updated, but I could swear by this. And what I like about it is it is actually Canadian made. Now, sometimes people write to me from the US and say, oh, I can't, you know, I can't find it. You guys can buy systemics. Now, I know some people don't agree with them, but you can buy systemics that you can add to your soil. That will kill, do the, basically do the same job. It will kill the bugs. So um, if you can't find something equivalent to this, you do have other options. Although I'm, a, I'm sure you probably can find something similar. Um, I'm not sure how, can, how Ireland sta and the UK stand on systemics. Um, I can't remember, to be honest with you. So I don't know if you can buy systemics there but you know it's, it's available here it might not be the exact same product but I'm sure you'll be able to get it in other countries as well so these by the way are Dollarama drinking cups and I think you get like 20 of them for two or three dollars and they fit perfectly so I bought these little net pots from Amazon last year I did put a link on the video at the time 
they were a fantastic deal. I haven't seen them since, but these pots are were something like 3.93 inches. So they were just under four inches. And as you can see, they fit perfectly into these pots. Um, do be careful if you do want to do the same, that you get something that has, like, so the pot itself isn't four inches. The pot itself is probably three inches, but the rim is four inches approximately. So if you want it to fit in like this, just make sure that you have a wider rim. Start flushing these babies. Okay, so that is done, guys. So I just want to speak a little bit about the nutrient solution I use. So I use Root Farm, and Root Farm is actually a Canadian company. And you can buy this in Canadian Tire. I think you can probably get it in Home Depot and Lowe's as well. And I use it just because it's Canadian. I like to support Canadian companies. And I know there are lots of different nutrient solutions out there. You can, if you go on Amazon, you will find them. But I find that this works very well. Now, how, how do I mix it? So I bought these four litre jugs in Dollarama. And I put a capful of each. So I use the base which is part one, and then I use the all-purpose, which is my part two. You can also get a flowering, and um, you can get a, a veg, one for vegetables. So I just use the all-purpose. And what I do is I fill my four liter jug and I just literally put a cap full of each in. In fact, I think I put too much in last night because I was too lazy to measure with the cap and I just poured it in. So because of that, I'm going to dilute this when I'm filling up my pots. So I will just put a little bit of water in the bottom. I should have done that before. And uh, I don't need to show you on all of them, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of water on the bottom. And then I'm going to put in my nutrient solution. And I don't, I bring my nutrient solution just under, like, so you can see here, the actual net pot is sitting in it. I don't put that much in. I bring it just to underneath the net pot. So we can actually pour a little bit of this into another pot and yeah so just about there so you can if you can see hopefully I'm not blocking so I just bring it just underneath the bottom of the pot so the only water it's getting is what it's wicking up through the wicking cord so that is everything I'm going to finish now watering these and I'll put them back in the cabinet so if I do the other cabinets I'll record it as well so you'll get an update on the plants so i hope this was informative i hope you enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you watched till the end don't forget to put the green heart emoji in the comments and thank you again for giving me time out of your busy day